I started filming a few things on a new camera not too long ago, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. And as the name suggests, it can shoot in 6K and in RAW format for that matter. All of that to say though, that the files I'm working with because of it are not small ones. So while I do have my Samsung T5 that I do actually really like, the new camera did at least start to get me researching some newer SSDs that could maybe replace it. I then proceeded to buy quite a few of them and tested them all out, as you do. And now I think I have a list of the five best external SSDs that are out right now in 2020. Okay, now the first one I immediately went for, and honestly it's probably already my favorite on the list, is actually a successor to my original drive. This is the Samsung T7 Touch. Now there is also a T7 model that is slightly cheaper. It's not out yet though, and the model that I grabbed does have the word touch added to the end, and that's because it also has a built-in fingerprint sensor directly on the side of the drive, which is kind of neat. You can set this up using the included software on the drive to be able to then encrypt the drive and have it only accessible if you put one of the up to four fingerprints associated with the drive on the sensor. Otherwise, it just shows as a read-only folder with a lot of your stuff hidden. Now, as far as portability goes, it's pretty small and encased in metal, which feels really nice. It's a bit taller, but also thinner than the T5 that I had before, but has just about the same width. And that's important for me, and it might be for any other T5 users that are looking to switch. The T5 was so popular, honestly, that a lot of companies began making accessories for various products that held the T5, like this handle from Small Rig that allowed you to slip the T5 inside it, or this mounting bracket to sit a T5 on top of your camera, etc. So, if you happen to have any of these accessories, then that same width, in a lot of cases at least, means that the T7 will fit well enough in the same accessories. Now, for the speed. The T7 managed about 940 megabytes a second, sequential read in the Crystal Disk Mark benchmark, and in my drag and drop test average around 570 megabytes a second. Now it's still using the same top USB spec that's out at the moment of USB 3.2 Gen 2. By the way, that's just a renaming of USB 3.1 Gen 2. It something happened where the USB people decided to change the name, but those two are the same thing, just so you know. So to get the better speed, since that is the same spec for the connection as the T5, it turns out that Samsung updated the controller inside the device and is partly at least why that speed has increased. Now that speed along with every other SSD on this list for that matter is enough for me to edit my 6K footage directly from the drive. So I imagine whatever you need to do with it, it'll probably handle it pretty well. Now in the box, you get a short USB type C to C cable and a USB type A to C as well. The T7 Touch starts at $129.99 for the 500 gig and you can get it at the links below for the cheapest price I could find. Next up is the upgraded version to a drive that has also become almost as popular, at least, as the T5. This is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And firstly, it's slick and small. The SSD is a bit taller than the T7 and just a tad thicker. It's made out of metal for protection and to dissipate heat, but it's covered almost entirely in silicon rubber, and because of that, it's actually dust and water resistant to the tune of IP55, something that the others on this list can't claim. Something else that was a point for the Sandus Extreme Pro is that even though it's rated for the same read-write speeds as the T7 for the most part, around you know 1,000 megabytes a second or so, it actually was faster than the T7 in both Crystal Disk Mark, 955 megabytes a second sequential read, and my Dragon Drop Test, 615 megabytes a second or so, even if only just. Now, just like the T7, it comes with a type C to C and a type A to C cable in the box. And even though the SanDisk lists the SSD to support USB 3.1 Gen 2, again, it's actually the same as the T7's USB 3.2 Gen 2. SanDisk maybe just didn't get the memo to rename it. You can buy the SanDisk Extreme Pro for 119 for the 500 gig. You can find out more about it at the links below though. Next up, we have the Seagate Fast SSD, aptly named, maybe. With a 540-500 megabyte per second advertised maximum read-write speed, it's about half as fast as the first two on this list. But in Crystal Disk Mark, it still managed to get 560 megabytes a second for sequential read, and in my drag and drop, it still got about 360 megabytes a second for writing. So, it's no slouch. 
The case has an aluminum top that you can see, but the rest is plastic. Regardless, it still supports USB 3.0, not 3.1 or 3.2, however, through a Type-C connection and comes with a USB Type-C to C and a USB Type-A to C cable in the box. Now, the real reason it's on this list, though, is that it gives you decent speeds, enough to still handle any video editing for the most part, but it's cheaper than the other two. It starts at $84 for the 500 gig, $40 less than the SanDisk, and is actually the cheapest on this list. But that gap also gets larger if you, say, go for the two terabyte option for just 249 compared to the 429 for the SanDisk and 399 for the T7 Touch. Again, I've left links below for the cheapest places I could find it if you wanna check it out. And this is the Western Digital My Passport SSD, and it's very similar to the Seagate SSD. The same 540, 500 megabytes a second read write speeds, 340 megabytes a second in my drag and drop write test, and 540 megabytes a second in the Crystal Disk Mark Sequential Read test. The same USB 3.0 Type-C connection, but it comes with one USB-C cable and a USB-C to A adapter instead of the two separate cables, and it's even similarly priced. The 512 gig option is about $90 at the time of making this video like the others, and the largest two terabyte option is just 280 bucks. Now, the reason I added it to this list in addition to the Seagate really, is the fact that it just looks nicer to me. And also it's so darn tiny. Okay, and this this last SSD, it's a bit of a stretch to be on this list, honestly. It's, it's sort of kind of a bonus one. But I wanted to put it on here though, just because it's become super popular for a number of reasons. It's the Samsung X5. Some of the big talking points is that it's encased in metal, so it's pretty durable and it has a theoretical 2,800 megabytes a second read and 2,300 megabytes a second write, as in 2.8 and 2.3 gigabytes a second. Yeah. One of the reasons for those speeds though, is that it's Thunderbolt 3 capable and comes with a short Thunderbolt 3 cable, by the way. This means that it has a much larger pipe that it can send data through. It also means that you can only get those speeds if you are using a computer that has a Thunderbolt 3 USB-C port on it. Now, the biggest downside to this drive though is the price. The 500 gig is $200, the one terabyte is 350, and the two terabyte is a whopping $700. But if you want one of the fastest small drives that you can get and have the extra cash to spend, it's a good option to at least consider. Regardless, you can check out the links below for the cheapest price I could find, along with, of course, all the other SSDs on this list. And there you go, some of the best external SSDs for 2020. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below uh, of the test of all the things that you saw here. If you have any other SSDs that you really like, leave those down below as well. Maybe it'll help somebody else out who doesn't want one of the options here. If you like this video though, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Also check out the rest of the channel. If you like what you see there, please subscribe and ding the bell next door to subscribe so you get notified when I do new videos. Also, I started a new series called Decoder. It is a weekly series where I try to explain a new piece of technology. Check that out. Love to hear what you guys think about that as well. As always though, regardless, Thanks for watching.